Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining another Nimble training webinar. Today, we will take a deep dive into Nimble's contact listing and cover how you can segment your database using various fields. We also cover what are some of the next steps you can take as you create segmented lists, like saving segments and sharing them with your team, sending group messages, using staying touch reminders, and also how you can use the segmentation to come up with empty contact records you might not even need to have in your database and clean the database this way. If you have any questions or feedback during today's session, please type them in the questions box and we will cover them at the end of today's session. I know that everybody on today's webinar has been using Nimble for some time, but maybe you haven't really been using segmentation. That's why you're here. So I want to spend a few seconds just describing um, what the feature is all about. So it's a search engine within the Nimble database, and it allows you to search across many of the fields that uh, help you organize your contacts in Nimble. You can search your database using any of the existing fields in Nimble. So the existing fields are fields like address, phone numbers, um, anything that we already put in the database for you. But on top of that, and we will cover how to create uh, custom fields during today's session as well. You can also search your database using any custom fields. So if you are interested in creating custom fields for um, to to log in information such as the purchase history, what is it that your customers purchase from you and when, then you'll be able to segment on it, create lists, share them with your team, and so on. Then we'll also cover how you can use Nimble group messages. Nimble allows you to send group and templated messages to large numbers of people. You can, uh, the, lim the basic limit is 100 group messages per person per day and the clock resets at midnight. So if you need to send more than that, you can either spread it out across a few days and then make sure you are properly tagging the people and excluding them from um, from the outreaches so you don't email anybody twice or we also have upgrades av uh, upgrades available so you can upgrade to get up to 300 messages to send per user per day and the cool thing about nimble's group messaging is that because it's being sent from your email provider, nobody on the list will know that they are part of a group message. So if you're using Outlook or if you're using Gmail, you send me a group message. I will not know that you send it from Nimble. To me, it will look like you really took the time to send it as a one-on-one -on -one message from Gmail or Outlook. Uh, Nimble also allows you to copy and paste your email signature, so that all will look good and legit. So this can really save you a lot of time when you need um, to touch a uh, bigger, bigger number of people. We also have a special offer for new users. So I'll put it on the screen for the purposes of the recording. So uh, if somebody is watching the recording and you are interested in checking Nimble out, you can go to nimble.com slash offer slash webinar 30 and you will get 30 days for Nimble, which is um, an extension to the regular 14 days. So now here we are in Nimble. I won't be covering any of the details because uh, today we will be focusing just on the three features. So we'll cover the contacts page here, Nimble's segmentation. We will cover how to use group messaging and also custom fields. So here we are in the main contacts view. You can see that on the left side, you can do some basic segmentation and Nimble will show you all your contacts. You can uh, show, you can display just people or just companies. If you use the little star in Nimble, you can also quickly create like a VIP list and that will be under marked as important. You can also quickly see who are the people that you have recently viewed, meaning that you clicked on their contact record in Nimble those that have been recently added either from, from here 
or in uh, as an as a bulk, maybe through a CSV file or Outlook or Google Contacts import or from our extension. And then they'll be here and you'll be able to go through them and um, take next steps like tag in and, and so on. Recently contacted, that's a very a very useful tag as well because Nimble was automatically recording the last time you talk to people. So last time you emailed them or somebody else on your team. And this information is also segmentable. So if you want to, if you're creating an outreach list and you want to segment it by the people that you recently touched, and maybe you want to separate the group into the people that maybe you didn't talk to in a very long time, and then make sure that you tailor the message for, uh, for the people that you haven't talked to in maybe more than a year, then this feature will make it possible for you. You can also set up stay in touch reminders in Nimble, and then you'll be able to quickly go into this filtered group and see who are all the people that you set up some sort of a stay in touch reminder with. You can remove it, you can reset it, or you can uh, you can set it again. So I'm gonna set up a weekly one. We also have a removed contacts folder. So this is like your last um, last. Uh, it's like a last option to recover your data. So even though we we will always ask you if you're really 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 sure that you want to delete your context, uh, we know that mistakes can happen. Sometimes we just say yes 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 to all the pop-ups on our screen. So you can always come here and recover them, or you can come here and make sure that they are in fact deleted permanently you can also expand the view here and put it back this way so let's go back to all contacts and i'll show you how you can use the segmentation to come up with some segmented groups so you'll start your search by clicking on segment search and you'll see these filters here. These are just some of the filters that you can filter your database on. These are the filters that our users use the most. That's why we display them here. But after clicking on add contact filter, you'll be able to select from any of the existing filters. Like I said, those filters that were already default in the database or those that you or somebody else on your team created. So if we want to use our existing tags to search for. We just click on tags. I can pull up a list of my current clients. And here they are. If I want to further segment this list, I can say either and or or, depending on the results I'm expecting. So I'm going to want to create a list of all my current, current clients that are based in California. So I'm going to do contains word. I'm going to do CA updated. And here they are. So the next step can be for me to select all of them. I can also change the owner on all these people. So I'm going to assign them to myself because they are my clients. I can also change the privacy here. So you recently put in this uh, great feature. So I could set all these as private and nobody else on my team will be able to see them. So um, this is a great option if you want, if you have some investors or just some, some contacts in the database that you don't want anybody else on your team to be able to even see that they exist. So then you'll be able to pull up the list of the people. And then once you have them in the search, you can uh, set all of them as private in the bulk. You can also set up set up rules here and create groups for uh, for each of your departments and then distribute the permission to see uh, see the different contacts. I can also save this search. So I'm going to name this segment as 
actually do California clients. I'll save this search. It will show on the left side here. I can also click on the star here and make it as one of my top lists. I also have the option to share this with my team. By default, it will be private. So if you want to create a bunch of searches here, you really don't have to uh, worry about messing up the screen of any of your uh, coworkers because it will by default only appear on your own Nimble View. But if you do want to share this with any of your team members, you can just unlock it like this and then it will show up under their segments. Now we can go back to the search and create a new one. So another example of how you can segment your database can be, again, let's pull up a tag. So I tagged some sales influencers in the industry. Because we have the integration with Twitter, and since they are influencers, they usually are active on, on Twitter. So I can also measure their influence by looking at how many followers they have. So I could do just the people that have more than 10,000 followers. So here's when I'm paying attention to the rules here comes in handy. So right now Nimble showed me people that are either tagged as sales influencers or those that I have in my database that have more than 10,000 followers. So I just wanted to segment the list further. So I'm going to say, uh, and so I want them to be tagged with the tag sales influencers and also have more than 10,000 followers. So now it's only two people. And then I could select all of them. And I could apply a tag to all of them. and I could create a tag like this. I can also mark them all as important or not important, and I can set up a stain touch reminder and I can do a custom one as well. So I wanna be staying in touch with them every 14 days and I want Nimble to remind me to do so. Internally, we also use Nimble to make sure that we are tagging everybody that has written about us in the past. So then we, when we have um, an announcement we are making, uh, we want to we want to first email the writers and um, analysts that have already covered us in the past that already know about us. So I've tagged some people as press wrote about Nimble. You can pull up the tag this way. And I want to further segment it by their description. So I'll choose and here plus I'll select description from the list and I want the description to contain the word CRM just to really create a targeted group of people. So now we're down to Anita and let's say I would have more people here than just Anita. I could send her a group mess. I could send the people a group message with the uh, announcement and asking if they would be interested in learning more and possibly covering it. Another useful thing we can search for are birthdays. So, and because there's really a lot of filters that already exist in Nimble. Um, and especially if you start utilizing custom fields, it might become a little overwhelming. So I would suggest trying to type whatever it is you want to come up with just to save time so you don't have to be scrolling. So I'll do birthday and I'll do a range here. So I'll do actually the month of December. So this way. Nimble will tell me all my clients that 
or partners that I have in my Nimble database that have a birthday coming up in the next month. So then I can go on Alice's contact record. I can go on to schedule and I can create a task here. And then of course I can set up the due date, can do a specific date and time, and then Nimble will remind me to send her a message or give her a call depending on the relationship we have. And because we do have the option to set the account owner in Nimble, you can also segment your database based on that. So I'm going to create a list of all the contacts that are set on which I'm set as the owner. And I can further refine the search by last contact date. So if I want to reach out to all of my important clients, I can segment the list, like I already mentioned earlier, by the people that I've been in touch with recently. And then I can also have a group that I would want to maybe say something a little different in the email, like it's been a while since we last talked, you know, let's uh, let's schedule a time to uh, catch up. So I could do in the last, I don't know, 30 days. And then it's a much smaller group that I've recently talked to. So then I can select all of them. We can finally go to a group messaging here. And as you can see on the on the left side under recipients, I see all the people that came up in my search. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody under errors, that means that you didn't have an email uh, email for them. And if that happens, there will also be a green button next to them and you will have the option to use our contact discovery feature to find the person's contact uh, contact information. It, it works on credits. So I believe that everybody will get 25 credits to test it out. And when you run out, it's like an add on feature. So um, we can share a support article with more information about how you could purchase these credits. But once you use the green button here and we find the information for the person, they will automatically jump in here and you'll be able to message them. If you do connect multiple emails to Nimble, always make sure that you are selecting the one that you want the email outreach to go out of. So I have my G Suite account here, but I also connected my Office 365. So depending from which email address you want to reach out to the people, just select it here. You can also select uh, existing templates. So I could pop it in like this. If you are typing something and you you realize that it's something you would like to reuse in the future and save time on retyping it, you can also save it as a template by clicking here. You can also reset the form. You can CC and BCC people. The thing to know here is that uh, because they these emails are being sent as individual emails through your email provider, which um, has the, the biggest uh, advantage of doing it this way is that the recipient will not know they were a part of a group outreach and to them it will look like a one-on-one -on -one message. But the disadvantage could be um, when you want to CC any of your colleagues on that because then they would receive the emails individually. So that's something to think about. Um, you can use merge tags, but you can select the merge tag on first name, last name, title, and company. It will look like this. So then you can select the first name and say, happy Tuesday, happy Wednesday. And then Nibble automatically grab the first, first names, or you can also do company names. So it will really help you to personalize the email. You can definitely remove this in settings or manually here. And as I mentioned, and as you can see here, I do have my email signature here. So you can set it up in settings. And after we finish talking about what we see on the screen here, I'll also show you where you can set it up in settings. 
So when you're ready to create your email, you can also use our basic formatting. Here you can attach files, um, you can insert images and so on. It's also a good idea to always send yourself a test message to make sure that everything uh, looks good. There are no typos. If you do include a link, it's good to make sure that the link works. You can also tell Nimble not to track the message, but we do have the built-in tracking, which will give you the insights on the clicks and opens. So then you will know exactly who's opening your message, how many times, and if they're clicking on the, on the link there. And when you're ready to send it, you can send it. So let's click on group messages here. So once you do send some outreaches, you can go to group messages, click into here, and you'll be able to see how many messages you sent, what the open rate is, what the click rate is, how many people didn't read it, how many emails failed. And because we do have the option to add an unsubscribe link, you'll also be able to see how many people unsubscribed. You can then either select all of them or look at the number of times people engage with your email and maybe you haven't heard from them, but you see that there is some interest. They open it more than once. They even clicked on whatever you included in there. So you could possibly send them another message or you could tag them and possibly ask any of your colleagues to do the follow up for you. You can also mute the conversation. So we do give you the option to set up notifications but if it becomes overwhelming you can always come here click on the mute button and then figure out what is um for how long you want have the message or the conversation muted you can also um, unmute it after the um first wave disappears so Creating a new group, group message is easy as well. You could just click here and then you could override it. The only thing is that you would have to manually start typing all the recipients. So it's best to use the, the segmentation first, figure out who the people are, properly segment the list, and then create a group message. So let's go into settings now to review. the email signature so you can just copy and paste here or you can do the formatting here this is where you'll also be able to manage your unsubscribe list you can add people on it manually and you can also see your whitelist in here templates can be managed in email settings as well you can create templates either here or in the group message you can add them in manually or copy and paste from a Google document, for instance, and you can also share them with your team. And since we are here, I want to jump into covering our custom data fields. So they can be created here. And you can create up to five custom tabs and under each custom tab, you'll have the ability to create up to 100 individual custom fields. So this is one custom tab I created. I called it purchase info and the custom field was called a purchase date. We can also create a completely new one. This is how you can delete one. When you wanna create a new one, you can just click here and the editing box is on the right side. You can call it client purchase info. You can determine if you want this to be available on all contacts or just people or just companies. So I'm going to create it on all contacts. And now we can create the individual fields. So it can be the product type you want to list what is it that people are buying from you 
and this is where you can define the field type. So it can be a single line text, multi-line text, it can be a select box. So if you're only selling few products, it might be easier for you to create like a drop-down menu here. And you can also decide if you want it to be one column wide or two columns. And don't forget to always make sure you are applying the changes. It won't save automatically. So you can also create separators. So if there is a lot of information you would be creating in the custom data field, you might want to utilize the separator to make it a little more um, organized. So let's go on to a contact record to see what it actually looks like when we do create it. So here we are on Alice's contact record. When I go here on data fields, it will show here. So client purchase info. And I edit the product type and I have the drop down menu here. So let's say that Alice purchased Nimble Business from us. I can go on to contacts and also if I want to report on how many people bought a specific type of product, I could search for it here. Okay, product type, that's how I called it. So I want to see all the people that purchase Nimble Business. And it's not showing Alice, so let's see why that is. Recently viewed, let's find Alice on here. Go to data field and okay. product type of business is here. Go back to contact. Try one more time. Okay, so something is up. So let me report it as a bug and have the team investigate. But this is basically how you can create the custom fields. And just to reiterate, you can you can find them under data fields under every contact record in Nimble. You can create up to five custom tabs. And under each tab, you'll be able to create up to 100 individual fields. We also have the system tab that we put in automatically. And this can this information is also segmentable and it will give you the insights on who created the contact record and when. When was the last time the contact record was modified? Who modified it? Last time the contact uh, or the person was contacted and last time they were contacted by somebody on your team. So this information can be used for several different reasons. One reason can be when Somebody in your company opens up a contact record and they see that somebody was changed incorrectly. There's uh, maybe information missing. They can at least see who was the last person that messed with the contact record. So you can uh, backtrack it and um, make them to um, put the information that's missing back. And of course, you can use this all this information to um, segment your data on. I also wanted to cover our upcoming training webinars. So we do rotate. We um, Every other week, we go through the entire application. So that will be the one coming up next week. We will go through every single feature in Nimble, and we will also do an overview of our mobile application. I will be sharing my screen and showing you how you can uh, use the um, mobile Nimble mobile application version and all its features. And the following week, we will do a special webinar. We will cover how to 
import contacts into Nimble, and we will also go further into contact management strategies. And then again, we'll do the whole thing. On December 23rd, we will have a special webinar about using Nimble for prospecting. Then again, gener general overview. And on January 6th, we'll be doing another segmentation, group messages, and custom fields. If you are on our email list, you will be receiving invitations to register, but you can also go to nimble.com slash company slash webinars, and then you'll be able to register there. So I want to look at what the questions are. And it looks like we don't have any questions just yet. So if there's anything you would like to ask about today, please, please let me know. And again, this session is recorded. You can go on our YouTube channel, you can just search for Nimble CRM, and then you can subscribe to make sure that you have access to not only our training webinar recordings, but also our other webinars. We do case study webinars with our users, we do influencer webinars, so often we invite influencers from the industry, influencers um, from that people that are specialists in um, sales, marketing, social media, so any of the things that um, you might need to do what you're already doing even better. So you can uh, check all those recordings out. And of course, if you have any questions later, you can email us at care at nimble.com and we will make sure to get back to you. So with that, I still don't see any questions coming in. So thank you so much for joining the webinar today. I hope it was helpful and I hope I'll see you uh, on another webinar in the future. Have a great day. Bye.